This is the 101 Hero, a 3D printer I honestly thought I would never power up again after I reviewed it a couple of weeks ago. It's an extremely low cost machine that was on Kickstarter and you know the end result is you get what you pay for. However, it did come to mind that this machine would be a pretty good example to show people what tethering is for 3D printing and for people who may have bought a 101 Hero, how you can really unlock its, I guess, potential and get the most out of this little machine. Let's get started. Ah, uh, welcome back to Maker's Muse, guys. So as I said, this is the 101 Hero and it is a 3D printer that has no screen or interface of any kind. You're meant to run it by getting an SD card and putting it into the SD card reader and then it's meant to just start printing, which is kind of okay, but not really if you want to do anything beyond that. Changing filament, for example, is difficult in terms of preheating it and all that sort of stuff and getting everything uh, sort of aligned and the bed level is really hard if you have no interface. However, I have discovered that it's very easy to tether this machine to a computer using the built-in USB port. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. So what you're gonna need is a printer-style USB cable. Everyone has one of these lying around. It's a USB type A to USB type B. And basically this will just plug straight into your computer and straight into your printer. So let's plug it in here and plug it into the empty port, which looks like a little sort of uh, square with the top edge of chamfered on your one-on-one here. And make sure it is powered on and make sure the switch is on as well. In my case, it's pushed towards the power and the LED inside will turn on regardless. So don't use that as a reason for thinking it's powered on or not. Make sure that switch is pushed in the right direction to give the actual machine, like the motors and that sort of thing, power. So I'm gonna show you my profile within Simplify 3D initially, but then I will show you how you can also tether this to a bit of free software called Repetia. But let's start with Simplify 3D. What I'm going to do is go to Tools and Machine Control Panel. So this is how you can control your 3D printer and it's called tethering where you have it tethered to a PC and you can use it to send G-code commands over which the machine caches and then implements. So what we can do is we can select the port it's connected to. It should automatically select itself, uh, in this case port three or COM3 rather and the board rate. So this is the communication speed and it's important to get this right. So I had to guess to find out what the, the 101 Hero actually liked, but it's actually 115200. So select that and then we'll go to connect. So it will attempt a connection and then hopefully you'll see a big readout and the machine will communicate back with the PC. And it's saying that the SD card has failed initialization. That's because it's not plugged in, which is fine and it's running Marlin firmware. And then it just keeps sending these like, are you still alive commands every second or so. So we're now connected to the 101 Hero via tethered to our laptop and we can now control it. So what I'm going to do is go to jog controls and this is the interface where we can control the machine. The first thing I wanna do, judging with where the arms are, again, the 101 Hero, very fragile, don't move the arms yourself, <laughs> always uh, command it to go to places, don't force them. I'm going to home everything. So I'm going to go to home all, click that, and there we go. So the machine homes itself. We can also command it to move in different locations so we can drop it down, for example, 10 degrees. So 10 millimeters, another 10, another 10, like that. And we can also warm up the print head to change the filament because I was very lazy last time I used this, I just cut it off. So I do need to warm it up and withdraw this little a DAG of filament. So to do that, I'm going to go to uh, choose the active tool head. There is only one tool head, it's only one extruder, which is zero. And we're going to choose to turn it on. And it's going to heat up to 205 degrees. You can change this as you like, obviously. So we're warmed up now and in the control panel, you can see we're heated up to 206 degrees and it was targeted to 205, so that's pretty accurate actually. And we can now tell the extruder to withdraw our filament, which is pretty easy. So what you want to do, again, in our, in our job controls, is retract. I'm going to retract 100 millimeters and out our filament comes. So we can pull that out. Might need a little bit of assistance. There we go. <laughs> Get rid of that. So for the 101 Hero, you want to make sure that the, uh, the filament you're inserting, again, is nice and sharp. So get some side cutters or scissors and cut it at an angle so it's got a point. And then we're going to put that in that and hit extrude. 
If you haven't seen my review, definitely watch it. I had to modify the extruder its assembly itself to apply more pressure onto the extruder gear before it wasn't actually printing correctly because it was slipping. I had to put some cardboard in to shim it. But since doing that, it actually works pretty well. And you can see here the filament is extruding through. So it's gonna do that for uh, 100 uh, millimeters. So we've done our extrude, all of that plastic is good and coming out cleanly, Put that aside. So now we're ready to print and we're gonna print tethered. So here I have my custom made factory file in Simplify 3D. I will link this in the description of this video. I know a lot of you have been asking for it, but to give you a rundown, basically what we have here is a very slow printing uh, profile. Um, under other, you can see that the print speed is ridiculously slow, uh, 900 millimeters per minute, which is 15 millimeters per second. Very, very slow. And uh, under layer, I've got a 0.2 millimeter layer heights, which is eh, average. Uh, temperature, 210 on the extruder. I feel it needs to be a little bit hotter than most other printers just because of the underpowered extruder feeder motor. And support structure, again, if you need supports. But keep in mind, this machine, at least in my case, is very much not accurate. So you're not gonna get the best experience out of high detail prints needing support. I've defined the 101 Hero with a build volume of 106 by 106 by 100 with the Delta Robot machine type. Uh, so it's got a cylindrical build volume. I don't actually think you can print up to these extents. So use this with caution. I haven't gone much beyond 50 or 60 millimeters in the X or Y, but with a Z, you're probably gonna get about 90, I'd say, before you run into any sort of issues. All right, so I'm gonna dump in my crystal thing, which I like to print quite a lot, and I'm gonna scale it up a little bit. There we go, something like that. And center and arrange, looks pretty good to me. I might actually sink it into the build platform just a tiny bit, just so the base I know is gonna be 100% flat. And I'm going to print this in VARS mode. So let's go to layer and single outline corkscrew print mode, which is VARS or vase mode. Actually, I might remove the bottom layers as well. So bottom solid layers zero. So it's just the outline of our, of our icicle thing. So it's gonna print like this, completely hollow up to the top. And checklist for your tethered printing. The machine is connected with it to a computer that's not going to go to sleep. Everything is ready to go. Filament's loaded, we're all good. That's hit, begin printing over USB. So it's gonna make sure the printer is preheated, then it's going to go through its homing sequence. In my case, G28, it's gonna home and then start printing. And then when the print's finished, it'll do G28 again, which will home it to the top and the print's complete. So we've printed the brim and now it's printing the start of our shape, which is in vase mode. So again, it's just doing the outline and then it's going to lay sequen sequential layers on top of each other without doing any sort of infills or anything like that. And if we fire up the machine control panel, you can see as it sends across the G code in little packets, it sort of, it caches small amounts at a time to the machine, to the 3D printer, and then it'll read them and run through them. So this means when you print tethered, it needs to be connected to the actual computer the whole time. And this can be a problem if your prints are sort of six or seven hours long because if this machine goes to sleep, then your print will stop. So this is why I don't usually recommend tethered 3D printing because if that chain of commands stops, the machine doesn't know what to do and it will just freeze where it left off. In some cases, it might stay powered on with the motors powered on and even the extruder hot, which can be bad. So it's ideally you don't want to do it. You want to print with SD card, but on a machine like this with no interface, tethering isn't actually a bad idea. And in this case, it lets us control things a lot more precisely. Right, so that's how you tether using Simplify 3D to the 101 Hero. But as I promised, I will show you how to do it in Repetia. So I'm going to kill this print. So to do that, you're just killing the chain of commands. So I'm going to hit stop. It's gonna run through the last command it got, stops, and I'm going to home it. So jog controls and home all, like that. And we're done. So I'm gonna make sure the machine's safe. So I'm gonna make sure the extruders are off and I'm going to disconnect it. That's great. And we'll fire up Repetia. So Repetia is free and it does much the same thing. You can tether to a 3D printer and print like that, or you can also save off G code and, and uh, use S an SD card. But I'm gonna show you how to tether it to the 101 Hero. So what we wanna do is go to printer settings and printer, let's call it the 101 Hero. 
Serial connection, that's correct. So again, choose the right COM port, uh, COM3 is correct. Uh, board rate, as I said, for this machine, it's 115200, so make sure that's correct. Uh, I haven't changed the cache or communication threshold, that seems to be fine as default, so let's apply that. And in terms of the printer shape, I've selected row stock, which is uh, delta, so circular, and I've got 100 by 100. So I had 106 in the Simplify 3D uh, profile, but yeah, doesn't seem to, I'm not printing that large on this machine anyway. So I'm going to connect, and it's connected correctly. It shows what's happening down the bottom in this case, so it's got uh, the connection information. And we can go to manual control, and this is much the same as controlling it with Simplify 3D, although I haven't really dived in too much into it, but you can home the machine like that, and you should be able to heat up things. So we can heat up the extruder, and it's showing it's been cooling down, now it's gonna start warming up. And you should be able to move it around various coordinates like Y, um, X, like that. I don't know if it has soft limits, I would be careful not to drive things, uh, oh, it seems to have soft limits, that's good. So it shouldn't break itself doing that. And yeah, then you can slice G-code and tether it that way using some free software, although personally I do prefer Simplify 3D. So thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this video on tethering the 101 Hero or any 3D printer for that matter, if it has the ability to be connected to a computer via a USB port. And if you enjoyed this video on Makers Views and want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks, and reviews, I'd love to have you on board and love to have you subscribe. My name's Angus, and thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Views. Catch you later, guys. Bye.